explosion, but um, starting with a small explosion then, uh, let me welcome to the stage uh, Sally uh, to give us an update on what's going on and I don't know if Daniel wants to join. How are we Daniel, do you want to come back? Thank you, Bill. That's the nicest thing you've ever said about me. Um, morning, everybody. Um, for anybody who doesn't know who I am, which maybe lots of you don't, um, Daniel, why don't you come grab a seat here? Thank you. So I'm Sally Costerton, and I uh, look after stakeholder engagement at ICANN. Uh, and occasionally, as is today, I periodically channel Fadi Shahadi, which is my spare, spare job. Um, so I hope that uh, we'll be able to have a, I think we'll be able to have a great session today. Congratulations to the committee that have put together such a good agenda. I echo what Steve says. Now, I've specifically been asked by Bill to shed some light. Now, I'm going to don't want to stand in front of Daniel. Let me just introduce Daniel. Daniel Fink here to my right is the head of the Secretariat for Netmundial. And I'm very pleased that he was able to be here. So I'll just make a few comments about what's going to happen at the meeting um, and some of the backdrop to it. And then if we have questions, um, we can take them between us, but hopefully between Daniel and I, we should be able to answer most of the questions that you have. Fingers crossed. Okay, so um, the first thing I would say is that, as you know, Net Mundial is a partnership between CGI um, in Brazil and OneNet. And this has uh, been quite a pioneering exercise, I think it's fair to say. It's a uh, if Fadi would say, um, if he was here, this is a historic opportunity, and it is. Um, it's also the first time, as far as I'm aware, that any uh, pairing of this type has tried to put on an event like this, and certainly in such a short time frame. Uh, and that has brought some, some quite big challenges operationally, but it's been very impressive to see how uh, the team, particularly in Sao Paulo, led by, by Daniel, um, very ably, uh, and the, his, his uh, partners in CGI uh, and on the two, three committees have, have really stepped up to the challenge of organizing such a big event um, under such an intense spotlight as well uh, in such a short space of time. There has been intense interest in this event. Uh, m much media coverage has already been generated. And I, I was reading this morning, I don't know if uh, any of you have yet had a chance to see it, um, there was a very uh, interesting piece in this morning's Economist online talking about the uh, recent announcement uh, from the NCIA and, and pointing to um, the importance of the Net Mundial event in looking at the broader internet governance issues um, that, it, that it's going to take under its wing. So I think that's just one example of how high profile this event has become um, in an incredibly short space of time. Now, that is mostly good. Um, but it's also something to be aware of. There's no question in my, my view that the world, and, and far very much the world beyond our ICANN community, is, is watching this event. And it's watching it, I think, for a couple of reasons, which are reasonably obvious. One is, how will the, uh, the multi-stakeholder model function in such a global environment, in a global stage? How will it show itself to be able to grapple with the enormous challenges of looking at principles and frameworks um, that go well beyond uh, some of the areas that we've been dealing with uh, in the past? And that's a very good question. And it's a, it's a challenge, it's an opportunity for us, particularly, I think, for those of us in this community, and I know many of you have registered interest to attend in person, and I hope that most of you will be able to access the meeting remotely if you wish to do so. Uh, it will give us an opportunity to show the world, if you like, what, what we can do and what that high functional multi-stakeholder model looks like in, in practice. Uh, the other reason that it will be high profile is because of where it is and um, the fairly unusual uh, platform of a, a national government co-hosting an event of this type. Uh, so I think, I think we have um, a, lot of, a lot of energy, to use Steve's words, ahead of us over the next four weeks. Now, in terms of just some practical issues, the first thing I should say is that it is on the 23rd and 24th of April, not the 26th and 27th of April. No, don't, it's fine. I just want to make sure that people do actually have the right date. Because if you turn up on the 26th and 27th of April, you kind of should probably hang around for the football. 
because I'm thinking that you, you know everyone will have gone home. Um, it is being held at the Hyatt in Sao Paulo. I think you all know this. Um, and uh, the other logistical point to make is that, as I referred to earlier, we will, of course, have remote access available. There is currently a request, which if you go to the Net Mundial website, you can see it's running on a banner at the top of the website, out into the community for partners for remote hub access around the world. And we will run as many, or the Secretariat will run as many remote hubs as, as we can. Depends on how many people step forward um, to participate in that. But I think, Daniel, the interest in that has been reasonably good so far, hasn't it? Yeah, so um, I'm not surprised by that. I think it's a good example of our community in action uh, wanting to do their bit and wanting to participate. So the Secretariat will make sure that once those, those organizations or individuals have volunteered and put their hand up to run a remote hub, they're properly supported um, with staff and resourcing and technical support to make sure that works smoothly. And we will also, also of course, run a normal Adobe link or something similar um, so that people can dial in as they are doing, I hope, today. In terms of the uh, structure of the event, I think, again, this is reasonably well known, but it's worth stressing. There are three committees uh, looking after this. There is a logistics committee um, which, who are looking after, fairly obviously, the logistics of the event. Uh, and that is uh, Hartmut Glasser, I don't know if he's here, I don't think Hartmut is here, and Nick Tomasso, uh, who is the head of the ICANN meetings team, um, are working very hard on that side of things. Um, and that includes helping with the, uh, organize the remote, uh, the remote access. Um, the, middle com the, the middle committee, I'm going to call it, I don't know, it's the second committee, is the, is the executive multi-stakeholder committee. Now, this is the committee that really is making decisions and recommendations about the agenda. This is its next job. And it will meet fairly soon to have a look at the, uh, all the various submissions that have been sent in. There have been nearly 200 submissions to NetMundial, which is a lot more, I think it's best to say, than we were anticipating, which is a really good thing, in my view. Because it shows how, not just how much interest there is, but it takes time and effort to write a submission like this. And this shows that many, many people really, really want to be heard and have their, their thoughts um, looked at and, 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 and uh, considered as part of this process. It, of course, brings a challenge because that committee is going to have to distill and, in, and examine all of those submissions and come to some kind of decision about how to structure an agenda. And we really thank them for the work that they are doing in this, because this is not an easy task, as I'm sure you can appreciate. And they need to do it in a way that is seen to be fair and uh, allow, allowing the right issues to be surfaced uh, in the two days of the conference. This is very challenging. I can tell you from my own personal experience, I've been quite involved since I've been at ICANN in the, I know, frankly, thankless task of putting together an ICANN meeting agenda. Uh, for which my inbox is full of all sorts of, 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 of quite um, spirited emails, shall we put it that way. Um, any, for any time for about a month in a run-up to an ICANN meeting, I kind of prepare my inbox for the attack. And um, it's really difficult to do this in a way that keeps everybody happy. I mean, it's all pretty much impossible, actually. But we have a lot of options in an ICANN meeting. As you know, we run a lot of different streams in parallel. We're not going to do that at Net Mundial. There will be plenary sessions only. So there will be no, I'm just looking to Daniel to check that I haven't got that wrong, but I haven't. There will be no closed sessions. There will be no, there will be no side sessions. All the debate will happen with the whole meeting at the same time in the main uh, ballroom. And that is, I think, very, very good from the purpose perspective of showing the world how the multi-stakeholder model engages with itself and with each other to make decisions and recommendations, but it creates some serious pressure in terms of how much can you actually get on an agenda in two days, because you can't move anything into another room or into another meeting. So I just thought it's worth mentioning that, because do bear in mind, and try and please be very supportive of that multi-stakeholder committee, because I think what they're doing is a very, it's a very big job, and it's a big responsibility, and we thank them for it. And then when they've made those recommendations, they will share them with the high-level committee which is, if you will, the kind of oversight steering group of the, of the whole meeting, which is being run by um, <coughs> Professor ba uh, Minister Bernardo, uh, who, who from, from, from the Brazilian government. And this will be the, the final 
hand who says, yes, we're happy with this, we're ready for this to, to go forward. So we're not quite sure exactly what date that agenda is going to be published, but I anticipate people will want to know that. So to give you some guidance, sometime in the first two weeks of April, hopefully nearer the beginning of April than the end of April, um, an agenda will be posted uh, on the NetMundial website, and everybody will be able to see and prepare themselves for that, set, that meeting. Um, I think that was all I wanted to say, um, other than to uh, hope that we see an awful lot of participation from the ICANN community at this event. I think we will. Uh, and to thank, in public, Daniel and the team at CGI. I think what they've done is really unbelievable, actually. Um, and I'm sure that it will be a very successful meeting, and we will owe enormous amounts of gratitude to them for having made it happen. So I'm happy to take any questions. Daniel, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I uh, just would like to introduce some other um, members of the Executive Multi-Stakeholder Committee. And I met this morning uh, Professor Flavio Wagner. He's over there. Yeah, thank you. Carlos Afonso, besides him. Yeah. Adam Peek, I don't know if he's here. Okay. okay. So, and also, sorry. Okay, oh, okay, all right, yeah, please. And, uh, could, you, could you introduce yourself so because yeah, my name, people my name remote. Is, my name is John Berard. I'm a member of the business constituency from San Francisco. And I was curious, it's the, the expressions of interest to participate um, have given us insight as to who may be there. Is there anybody that you have been surprised has chosen not to participate? Well, not not to send the expression of interest, you mean? I'm sorry? You mean not sending the expression yeah, yeah, of interest? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we are, we received some, some comments from from some committee members after we, we showed them the list of people who sent the expression of interest, and they remember some, some people that should be there but were not uh, in the first hand, uh, perhaps could, did, didn't pay attention or didn't have time to, to fill up the expression of interest. What we are doing is inviting these people through the chairman, Virgilio Almeida, so the people that the committee understands that should really be there, we are inviting them directly and, and registering them as well. So, and, and this is an on, ongoing process right now. So, uh, and we are receiving some, some, some comments as well from the community, so if you have any suggestion, just let, know, let us know, yeah. And also we have uh, Mr. Michael Nibel from the European Commission, also member of the Executive Committee, yeah, together here. Are there other questions? Anybody, any, any logistical or... Substantive questions about what's going to happen in Sao Paulo. Uh, now that we have the date correct, sorry. <laughs> in the in the age of mass surveillance, typos still happen uh, and go no, unnoticed. Uh, any other questions uh, for the organizers here on logistics? This is Steve Del Bianco with NetChoice. With respect to the 800 slots, as it were, well, how are they allocated between private sector, civil society, government, and are any of those allocations or quotas oversubscribed? Well, um, the, the first idea was to have five members per for uh, each country, uh, like two, two from government and, and three from the other from the other constituencies, but uh, it will be very difficult to to keep this quota. Because the, it was not an homogeneous application from, from several countries. We had 80 countries applying. Um, Brazil and the United States with the highest number of, of applications. So Brazil had 215 expression of interest, uh, United States 120. And the third country was India with 28 only. So we, we found that we, we, we will be able to, to invite all the people from the other countries except the United States and Brazil. And for, for this case, we have to invite them in, in groups. So that's what we did. So we selected at least one person from each organization. 
uh, from from uh, from each constituency, but uh, it will be very very difficult to to keep a balance uh, among all the all the groups because of the expression of interest was not very uniform. Right? But many people are not registering as well. So in the Steve, perhaps your question wasn't entirely clear to him. Yeah, it was just a simple matter of mathematics. Of the, of the 800, I had come to understand that a certain number were set aside for business and civil society and a certain number for government. And of those that were set aside for business and civil society, a big part of the audience here today, just let us know where it stands. Are they oversubscribed or are there still available slots? OK, yeah. So for governments, 200 slots, and uh, for for the other groups, 500 slots in the uh, in the um, in the attendance, uh, plus 100 invitees from international government organizations, intergovernment organizations. Yeah. I have a question. So Steve, I think the answer is we haven't. It hasn't been finalised yet. Is the is the short answer. Um, but the goal, my understanding of the goal, is that to the best of the ability of the organizers, they will be balanced. But Daniel's point is, it depends who expressed the registration of interest. And there wasn't an even representation from every single stakeholder group. It didn't work like that. So some stakeholder groups applied, a lot of people applied, and others lesser people applied. But the goal is, in, it is as much as possible to, to have a, a balanced attendance, of course, because this is, you know, as I said in my comments, Part of the goal of this is a multi-stakeholder process. So nobody wants there to be an unbalanced representation um, at the meeting, and that would that would be uh, not at all desirable. That's, but I don't think that the process hasn't been complete, completed yet. Uh, could I ask a question from behind you? <laughs> um, early in the discussion, there there was mention of the possibility of some allocation for global citizens. I had heard uh, mention that people like Bono and others might be coming. Is, is that still part of the concept, or is that is that gone? It's still ongoing discussion for with the board of chairmen. Yeah, it's, it will be a surprise. If there are no other questions, oh, okay, one, great. Hi, my name is Kang Lee from South Korea. I ask about the format of meeting. There's a whole whole sessions, there are no parallel session, right? There, the meeting uh, without any parallel session, just one whole session process. And is there any other like, sub-sessions or uh, uh, just, just the format of, i just curious about the format of meeting process. Yeah, no parallel sessions at all. Yeah, so everything will happen in the same venue, in the same, in the same big room, yeah. The only thing is that the discussions will be divided between, uh, for a center, certain amount of time, we will discuss about principles, and then another uh, amount of time, we will discuss about roadmap and so forth. How about the committee meeting? There's no committee meeting in Nemundia meeting? No, no. No committee meeting? Yeah, no. So Unless you want to organize something, by, but not in the main agenda. So the idea would be then that you've got a large plenary gathering that will all together discuss and reach agreement on things like principles in a couple hours. That's right. OK. And, and the time for specific meetings, perhaps, will be between um, when the discussion is running about roadmap, perhaps the, the, the people about the principle can go outside and, and, and discuss and come back in the next round. Um, I think it will be important, um, and I know the multi-stakeholder committee will look at this, that when they publish the um, agenda, they also publish uh, the format. In, in, you know, so we have, a, we have a, a short document that explains exactly what will happen when. But it's, it's not much point in doing that until you actually publish the agenda, because I think it would be confusing. But the two things should go together, because it's not using a similar format to, say, an ICANN meeting or an IGF meeting. So I think it will need a bit of explanation so that people know what to expect. Okay. All right, so, well, listen, thank you very much, Sally and Daniel, for that, that background on the meeting. Um, I had promised uh, the incoming chair of the NOMCOM, Monsieur Stefan Van Gelder, uh, two minutes to make a quick pitch without dropping all of his materials. 
uh, about the, the NAMCOM uh, challenge, and then we will go to the first panel. Thanks very much, Bill, and thank you to NCUC for, for this event. It's, it's really good. Um, I just wanted to speak two minutes to the current NOMCOM process, the nominating committee, uh, just to make sure that everyone in the room is aware that uh, we are currently looking for applications for leadership positions within ICANN. Um, we are recruiting this year uh, two members of the board of directors, those are three-year terms, two members of the at-large advisory committee for two-year terms, uh, one member of the CCNSO council, two-year term, and one member of the GNSO uh, council, which is a, a, a two-year term. Uh, and the CCNSO, sorry, is a three-year term. Uh, that recruitment process is ongoing at the moment, and I just wanted to make you aware of the deadline, which is the 1st of April. The call for SOI statements of interest uh, went out um, in uh, January of this year, and that's ongoing. So if you know anyone or you yourself uh, are interested, please use the NOMCOM website to apply. That's nomcom.ican.org and send in your SOIs. It's a simple process. And uh, please, uh, if you need any further advice on this, I promise, Bill, I'd be very quick. Just speak to myself as chair-elect of the NOMCOM or other members of the committee. I see Euro there, the associate chair, who was chair of the committee last year and part of the leadership team this year as well, and our chair for this year, Cheryl Langdonor. I'm not sure she's here yet, but uh, or any other members of the committee will be happy to help you. So uh, nomcom.ican.org and any questions, we're happy to answer. Thank you very much, Bill, and have a good meeting. Thank you, Stefan. That was amazingly concise. After spending a few years together on the GNSO Council, that's the briefest thing I could ever I've ever heard you say. <laughs> um, okay, so let us welcome then the, the first panel to the podium. If everybody could just come on up and I will move to the far left where I'm most comfortable. Um, and uh, Rafik uh, Damek will take over.